Hi everyone, Rachel Willow here. Um, so if you see me rocking back and forth, it's because I got HQ here at an open house um, in the institution. Long story short, uh, the person that I had covering for me um, had another obligation that they forgot about, so we are a package deal today. Um, luckily, she's starting to take a nap, so things are good so far, so wish me luck. Um, but anyways, because it's about to be her four weeks and her one month, which is like so crazy to me that it's already been a month, um, I thought I'd share with you guys her birth story because I had a few people who had commented about wanting to know about it. So I'm gonna try and make it a little short um, and not go crazy. If you don't wanna hear her birth story, that's totally fine. Keep scrolling through. Um, if you do though, I honestly, like preparing for labor and preparing for just overall pregnancy, hearing and reading birth stories was the way that I prepared myself the best way I could. Um, and it's just so crazy how there's such a different scope of birth stories from like the hypno birth pain free to ending up needing every single intervention in the book and having an emergency C-section. There's just such a wide range. Um, so leading up to giving birth, um, and I'm sure you guys kind of either heard about it through some of my videos, I can't remember if I mentioned or not, but, um, I know several of my family and friends knew about it. Um, I was but very much wanting to do a natural unmedicated childbirth. Um, and that is just something that I wanted to do personally. I know what that this is something that our bodies are capable of. We've been giving birth for years. And just based on the fact that I knew some of the risks, the cons, what could be going into her system, just a lot of other things and how I react to drugs, I just really did not want to go that route. So let's start with that. Um, the Thursday before I gave birth to her, I had um, my 38 week appointment and at that appointment they checked me and I was one centimeter dilated and I can't remember how it faced. I think it was like 30% of faced or whatever and if you don't know what that is, um, it just means her moving down, um, getting ready to come out. And um, when I went to go check out, I was supposed to have another appointment for my 39 week um, the following Friday. And they said, well, if we don't see you on Friday, we'll see you this weekend. And Dan and I both kind of looked at each other and we're like, holy moly, we could be having a baby this weekend. Like I knew, I kept thinking she was gonna come early, but I was like, that's like a lot early, okay. So we kind of were like starting to mentally prepare for everything. Um, Friday and Saturday, I lost my plug, which is an early sign of childbirth. And um, Saturday was heading to some showings and was like so nauseous, which is another sign of um, early labor. And Saturday into Sunday, I started having some very light, what I thought were contractions and not Braxton Hicks but they were really sporadic. And I was like, okay, so she's coming. Um, so I'll put in the comments kind of what I started to do to prepare my body. Um, there were some teas that I was drinking, some foods that I was eating, just to kind of make sure that my body was really ready for her and to try and kind of speed up the process a little bit and make sure that there was no, um, no pauses because there are a lot of people who start going into early labor and they're in early labor for, you know, one to two weeks. Um, there's a lot of people who stall out and their contractions stop. And I just wanted to make sure that everything was moving and grooving. Um, so I'll put that in the comments of some of the things that I did and ate and things like that. Um, so come Monday was Memorial Day and I was in a, a parade. Um, I sat on the back of a truck because at that point I was, I knew I was in labor, but I didn't think I could walk that far. <laughs> and so I just, you know, hitched a ride on the back and was still having kind of like some contractions, kind of mild, but nothing too crazy. Um, and of course, everybody was joking with me like about my water breaking and, you know, going into labor during the parade. And I was like, oh gosh, I really hope not. But luckily that didn't happen. 
And then um, come Tuesday, I was like, okay, this is really weird. You know, there's, a whole, there's not a whole lot happening, but I was still kind of having some contractions and um, I thought, oh, I'm gonna be one of those people who they say is gonna, you know, be in labor, but it'll be like another two weeks. Sounds like, okay, so, you know, I'm in it for the long haul. So then on Wednesday, starting at 10 a.m., I started having some serious contractions. Um, they were definitely few and far between, sporadic. Um, Dan and I started timing them, but they, they weren't enough for me to like kind of rush to the hospital. But I could tell that they were definitely intensifying from what they were over the weekend. Um, then around 5 p.m. that night, things really started to kick up. There started to be slightly more of a pattern. They were lasting a little bit longer. There was definitely some more intensity. And all of a sudden, I was like, okay, like she's definitely gonna be coming. It's either gonna be Thursday or Friday, but like she's on her way. Um, so we reached out to our doula, which um, when everything first happened and we found out we were pregnant during COVID, we did not think we were gonna have anybody in the be able to be in the room. Um, and I thought I was gonna have to be giving birth with a mask on. Uh, luckily, at my 38 week appointment, I was told that I didn't have to wear a mask during labor, um, but I would have to wear it if we were to leave the room, go between rooms, um, and Dan and the doula would have to wear one. And around halfway through my pregnancy, I, re I was told that a doula could be in the room. Um, so a doula is pretty much a mentor through childbirth. Um, they help with positioning, they help with um, guidance, motivation, um, additional information, education, research, um, and they're pretty much there to be your additional support and partner during everything to help advocate for you during um, childbirth. Now, because of COVID, we were only allowed uh, Dan and one support person. Um, so it was either going to be uh, a parent or a doula. I personally chose a doula. This was my first time. I was in a hospital. I knew what interventions could be in place. I wanted someone to advocate for me because I knew Dan was going to be helping me and kind of focusing on me. So that's the route that we chose and we are so, so thankful that we did. Um, so anyway, so around 5 p.m. we called the doula and she had kind of suggested you know keep track but not go too crazy and then around 10 we let her know that stuff was kind of intensifying but it was still kind of sporadic and at that point she suggested that i go to sleep that we both go to sleep get some rest because she was she knew she was gearing up um to come out but she said you know get your rest while you can if you can so i'm thinking to myself there's no way i'm getting any sleep like you're nuts whatever luckily i was able to um around 2 a.m though i was changing positions in bed and heard this really loud pop and it was enough to wake me up and i went to stand up and water came out um and shortly after was the quote-unquote bloody show that they talk about so I started laboring at home. We were utilizing the shower, the bathtub, walking around. And then around 5, uh, 4 a.m., my the rest of my water broke. Um, so at that point, we kind of knew she was coming. And same thing, I tried to labor at home as long as I could. Um, we went to Erie to give birth. So I knew that I couldn't wait forever because I was gonna need to get to the hospital and I didn't wanna have her in the car. Uh, so around five, I was like, okay, these are really intense. I think we should head to the hospital, call my mom to come pick up our dog, Luna, and we'll, we'll head out and we'll call the doula on the way. So we got there and they checked me and I was three centimeters. Um, and I can't remember how it faced, but I was like shocked that I was only three because I'm like, holy moly, this is already pretty intense and this is only three centimeters. Like, oh, I don't know what I'm in for. Uh, the doula came shortly after and when she came, uh, Dan and I were already utilizing the shower at the hospital to help with some pain relief. And when she got there, um, she helped guide me with some different um, 
ways to differ to breathe differently to really like ride the wave of the contraction and try and get out of the mental state that I was in um we ended up getting out of the shower to try some other different things because the doula thought that maybe um, she might be stuck around my pelvis and was having some difficulty with me standing. Um, so we ended up on a birthing bean and she was helping me do um, figure eights with my hips and some dips um, just to try and kind of like wiggle, wiggle her past. Um, and so things were really starting to progress and get even more intense and I just really couldn't get out of it mentally. Um, I started second guessing if I really wanted a natural birth. Um, I really just could not shake it and I tried essential oils, I tried just kind of like, you know, going inward and I really, really just couldn't shake it. Um, so I started asking about pain medications and I knew that I did not want an epidural that was very adamant um, and I knew also that I didn't want to get asked about pain meds until I brought it up so I was thrilled that that didn't happen until I asked about it now at that point I started talking to my doula and to the doctors about what my pain options were because I did not want an epidural and what would be the, le the least harmful to her and um, we ended up uh, landing on Stadol. It has another name, but that's what they called it in the hospital. Um, a low dose. I was very much adamant that I did not want to be hooked up to a continuous IV drip and that I did not want to be hooked up to wires so I could not move later on. Um, and I also chose a low dose because I still was thinking I wanted a natural birth and I did not want something to interfere with that. Um, so she said, well, before we go ahead with it, why don't we go ahead and get you checked? So at that point I was five centimeters and really in my head and was thinking, how am I going to go another five centimeters? Um, this is really painful. I definitely think she was slightly stuck, not sure on what. Um, and so we decided that I was going to do the low dose of Stadol. So around 10 am they gave me the one hit of state all low dose and um while i was laying down on the bed because of the fact that i was getting pain medicine i couldn't get up and walk around i didn't have an iv i wasn't hooked up to wires which was awesome we put the peanut ball in between my legs to keep my hips open so as contractions were going she was still moving along and literally an hour later at 11 it was gone. It was out of my system. I felt it. Dan saw the shift and so did the doula. And the next thing we knew, um, we were transitioning into getting ready to push. Uh, so I had them check me. I was seven centimeters going into eight and they pretty much just said, she's coming very quickly now. Um, and I kind of looked at them and said, okay, so when can I get my next, uh, bit of pain medicine? And they kind of laughed <laughs> and said, you're past that. There is no more pain meds. There are, um, there's nothing that we can do for you. She's coming. We don't want you sleepy. We don't want her sleepy. We need you guys to be um, fully awake. So I was getting the natural birth I wanted, whether I wanted it or not. <laughs> uh, so at that point, I really went inward emotionally, mentally, and really just focused on myself and kind of zoned out everybody else in the room. Um, Dan and the doula were massaging me. They were helping coach me. And very quickly, I was getting ready to push. And three hours later, he, there she was. Um, the entire birth from 2 a.m. until when she came at 3.39 uh, was 14 hours. So if you go by the 5 a.m. when the rest of my water broke, it was actually less than that, which is really shocking and surprising for most first-time moms because most first-time moms go into 24, 48, and even longer births and definitely have longer push times than three hours. So all in all, I was thrilled. She came as naturally as I could have it. I recovered very quickly which i will talk about postpartum in another video um but yeah that is hq's birth story and i highly recommend saint vincent hospital they were amazing uh eerie doulas both michelle and chris were fantastic we actually had michelle in the room with us and um when it's the second time around i know that i'll be doing 
everything the same but without the state all because now that I know what to expect and what I can do better to prepare myself for um, it's gonna be all natural completely from beginning to end so I will like I said in the comments add some things that I did to kind of make things go better and you guys have a great day bye